Hi guys, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Uh, today I want to go back into the imprints, the Samaras imprints in Warframe, but just a quick thing first, I'm still a bit uh, under the weather as it were, I've, I've still got a bit of a sniffle and, and a cough, so because there's a lot of reading, if I do start coughing, I'm sorry, just wanted to get that out of the way first off. But the next one that we've got to look at is the Crewman imprint, found and, and done the most of and whatever else by these people. But <coughs> this one is interesting because um, it gives us an insight into Ballas specifically and some of the politics of the, the executors, which I kind of touched on in regards to the Ballas quotes video that I did to kick off like the actual investigative kind of element of, of this uh, series that I'm kind of do, trying to do. Um, but it, it's interesting. It, it illuminates some stuff for us, which... Uh, which we'll go through towards the end. But anyway, uh, it also potentially shows us what the Jade Light is, this thing that that um, was th uh, f kind of pitched at Margulis as a threat. So they opened the chamber door just in time for me to see it happen, the Archimedean erupting into a flash, Jade-like and blinding. I knew her. She was the greatest scholar of genetics who ever lived, except now... She was nothing but mist and gore. A voice boomed from within. The crewman project is cancelled. Send in the next. The rifles are at my back. Uh, the rifles at my back, sorry, tried to urge me inside. Old faces filled the dome's uh, projections, immense and godlike. I, I, I don't know if that's supposed to say old or if it's supposed to say gold and they've missed a letter, but either way. Um, I walked into the centre of the room and the scorched scent choked my lungs. All around me, me they watched bored as I knelt upon the darkened judgment disc. The projection of Executor Ballas swelled large in front of me. I could see his purity, his symmetry, the beauty of his glittering gold irises. His voice thundered. The principles are clear. Your sentence is death. May the void forgive you. <coughs> as the judgment disc began to light, I stood, took a deep breath, and spoke. She will not forgive you. Laughter broke out among the faces of the dome. Others asked, What did he say? Ballas only smiled. You challenge us, Archimedean? I do. Kill me, and the Empire you are sworn to uphold dies with me. Ballas turned his head as the judgment disc went suddenly dark. An appeal comes at a price. Should you fail, you and your corpus will pay dearly. They already suffer in this growing wasteland. They have already paid. Will you also sacrifice the royal futures by ignoring my solution? Your solution is an abomination. Like you, it will be annihilated. Ballas motioned to a guard in the corner. Present the evidence. The chamber doors opened and a mass of guards entered. Guns trained inward. As they reached the centre, they parted, revealing a small cart. Atop the cart was a motionless creature, no larger than a hand. Its body was symmetrical, star-shaped, with a seamless matte black shell. A new projection, that of Executor Tuval, ballooned into the space. It looks harmless. Harmless, Ballas boomed in Tuval's direction. He turned to the centre of the dome. Show them. On command, the, the guards backed away from the cart and readied their weapons. Their leader took careful aim and fired a whisper round into the body of the creature, of my creature. Two of the limbs tore off the frame, revealing the glossy, gelatinous interior. Silence gripped the dome as Tuval shook his head. Then suddenly, the creature moved, convulsed, and, and ha the hard surface started undulating. In a moment, the wound closed and the thing was whole again. Beside it, another machine had grown from its severed parts. Their surfaces had changed, however, brighter, harder, resilient to whisper rounds now. Ballas looked triumphant as voting lights began to appear on the judgment disc. My green death was coming, so I roared at them. Did our ancestors, burned by fire, reject its power? No, they conquered their fear and learned to control it. The seven principles are a joke. His projection swooped down to me. The Orokin is the law, and the law is the Orokin. We are unbending. Your appeal is denied. Tuval interrupted. Our laws are sacred, but do not forget the plan, Ballas. His visage turned down to me. Countless other ventures have failed the plan. How will this machine fulfil its design? 
I tried to catch my breath and speak. The crossing to the Tau system is perilous. Adaptation and replication are the only way a terraforming journey can be made. They will build an interstellar rail as they travel. They will adapt to, ho to the host planet and prepare it for our arrival. They will save you. Tuval peered down at me. And when it completes its task, what will prevent it from turning against us, as the seven principles say? The floor. Tuval's eyes narrowed. The floor? The void is poison to them. Once they have reached Tau, they will be marooned there. To travel the rail uh, here would destroy them. Whatever the risk, risks, the origin system will be... Ballas shouted, enough. Dereliction of the law threatens the entire empire. Which, which one of you will risk this? Ballas was growing increasingly frustrated. The empire is already at risk, cried a shrill voice of another executor. Or perhaps you haven't noticed from your cosy position on Mars. To this... There was a round of applause, and the judgment disc remained unchanged. <coughs> Ballas, you lack consensus, shouted Executor Tuval. His projections seemed to shrink smaller until he finally broke his silence. Archimedean Parentol, against my better judgment, his disgust was palpable, your appeal has been accepted, you are free to go. One by one, the projections of the executors in the tribunal flickered off, and the guards ushered me into the hall. There it stood. Wrapped, uh, there I stood, wrapped with shock, when I heard his footsteps behind me. You did better than I thought you would. It was Ballas, the man, not the projection. It would seem nobody truly knows what they want. Uh, sorry, nobody knows. Let me try that again. <laughs> it would seem nobody truly knows they want a thing until you threaten to take it away. He broke into a smile. Wouldn't you agree, Archimedean? Okay, so this one's this one's interesting. We got a lot of information in here. First off, it seems like, well, this came from a crewman imprint. So, <clears throat> Corpus crewman seems like at one point they were looking to very specifically breed um, crewman, and the plan seems to be to expand outside the origin system. And we're seeing what the the creatures we're seeing here are the beginning of the sentience, but also something else. So. Let's go through this from the beginning to end. Firstly, the Jade Light seems to be this, this judgment disc. And the fact that they're bursting into a flash and they're screaming and it's blinding and all the rest of it. Well, where have we seen this before? I mean, we see it every time we do a capture mission. Every time that we, we have to scan a synthesis target. You know, um, they vaporize in front of us. So <coughs> we know full well that the Jade Light was suggested as almost a thing worse than death um so but here we're seeing that yes the person that's that's interacting with this judgment disc if this is the jade light considering it says jade like and blinding um it's it's a case of going okay well he's um the 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 technology being used doesn't necessarily mean death um you know, it, it means disintegration of a sort, but it doesn't mean complete and utter destruction. Next off, the one thing that I would want to point out here, considering we now know what Ballas is like, now that we've seen him in person, is that it mentions his symmetry. And whilst that might be true in the face, it's definitely not true of his whole body because he's got that huge ass right arm. So... But, again, this is well in the past compared to the current game at the moment. Because this is before the the four eras. Um, the, <coughs> the, 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 we see uh, Warframe artifacts encased in, uh, in the relics of. So it's, it's quite a substantial period um, before that. And then, in theory, the trip to... The Tau system would take many, many, many years um, for the sentience to be launched and and to get there because they can't use the void. So here we've we've got this this thing that's happening well in the past, like so far in the past. Um, so the fact that it's mentioned that it's th this woman that was disintegrated before him was the greatest scholar of genetics who ever lived. Um, that's all very well and good, but then obviously we know that there are people like Sylvanus and Margulis who are, in their time, far after this, 
far more substantial in their their outlook on things, as it were. Um, but then, if we we take a look now, so Ballas is is the, the beautiful thundering hologram. Um, but then he he suggests that the sentence is death. So it could be that the Jade Light is uh, a form of death, in one sense or not. It, it it's it's being referred to as both a sentence of death, but also seemingly a thing that's worse than death. Um, unless that just means that it's a very very painful death. Who knows? It's it's a very muddy area that, considering it's been named and kind of bought up several times now um, I'm kind of hoping that we find out just what it is because it could be the pin that, that kind of connects uh, Natar to Margulis to make Lotus as a, as a whole and why Natar has actually seemingly taken on Margulis's form in its entirety to present herself rather than not um. <coughs> but then moving on We've we've got um, the the empire is seemingly in trouble, and it seems to be um, kind of a, a, a situation of they are overmining, they are kind of grinding away at everything until there's nothing left. Um, we know full well that places like Earth have problems with um, not, not not at this time the forest stuff, but it, you know it's been it's been turned into a wasteland by the Orokin in one form or another they are terraforming places within the the origin system but seemingly there just doesn't seem to be enough um, but also we don't know the full extent of what the plan is if the plan is just to expand outside and that's what's being talked about then fine um, but then where he's, he's saying, you know, an appeal comes at a price. Should you fail, you and your corpus, your family, will pay dearly. He's pointing out, you know, Parentol is already pointing out that they're already suffering. There's, there's no two ways about it. But then... <coughs> excuse me. But then we get on to the, uh, the starfish, seamless black matte shell of this... Um, of the very first kind of proto-sentient. And the th there are two, a couple of things that stand out to me. First off, this this star shape, we still see it on the front of Lotus's helmet, on the front of Hunhouse helmet. Um, but in regards to Lotus, she seems to have... If, that, if, if Natar's body has separated out into the thing that houses her, if she has basically grown into being human from the, uh, of a sort from the fleshy material that's inside then that's fine. But also, um, it, it kind of pans out to... Um, this would maybe be why we see Hunhao as kind of a male interpretation of... Uh, a male version of Lotus, but he's got this black outer shell, but he's, he, it's more cracked because of the damage that was done to him when he let himself be, uh, be defeated. So th there's that. But also, there are a few other things that stand out from this that I kind of want to to go into in another video because they relate to the Unum uh, and the Plains of Eidolon and uh, so I won't go into them now but suffice it to say that we see this fleshy interior with a uh, an outer shell is is pretty relevant and, and relates and links to the stuff that's happening on in the Plains of Eidolon and with the Unum which I'm sure we'll find more out about uh, as we kind of progress into the future and as more is added to the game. <coughs> but they're, they're talking, uh, they, they move on, and there, there are arguments made, um, but the, you've, you've got mention of the plan, which again seems to be, at least in part, the crossing to the Tau system. Um, but then we've got the seven principles, and we know the seven principles are to do with Oricon technology and Oricon um, advancements, and it's basically to make sure that there's nothing that could could kind of defeat, overcome, or, or invalidate the Orokin. Um, as a people, or specifically as the upper higher class, it's it's hard to tell. But, again, here they're going, okay, so what's the, the issue? How, how, you know, how can we prevent this from 
from wiping us out if it's so good at adapting, developing, and, and so on and so forth. And then, though, it, it becomes this shift, this weird slant, where there's there are a couple of things that spring out to me. First off, with the seven principles, they don't seem to have taken full kind of um, account of these in regards to the creation of the Warframes and in to regards to the way that they treated the Tenno, which is interesting, seems to suggest that de in, in particularly desperate times, not times like this where, oh, we've got a resource problem and we've got a lot that we need to do, but we can still do it. Um, it's a case of these guys turning around and going, well, hold on. How are we going to expand on this? How are we going to, to develop it in a way that protects us but doesn't wipe us out and that seemed to be where they they trusted the tenno to harness the warframes you know where ballas in in his quotes refers to them as kind of void tamed beasts or tenno tamed beasts or whatever and it's like yeah but the tenno aren't reliable and the warframes aren't reliable so attaching the two surely just makes it more dangerous, doesn't it? You know, there, there's a suggestion of a flaw there that didn't exist. But here, <coughs> Perintol, who, by the way, again, related to the parent sequence, that's per the person whose name they've taken, as far as I'm aware, um, it, it, he, he pitches the whole void poison thing. And, you know, it, it, it no, says that they'll be marooned there. Travel in the, to travel the rail here would destroy them. Whatever the risks, the or origin system will be, I'm assuming he's about to say safe. But then this begs the question, some some Orokin, some sentients rather, managed to get through from wherever they are into the origin system. Hun Hao, the Eidolon, Natar, and it doesn't actually destroy them. So, <coughs> you know, once once they get here, they have to come here with a lot of forces and a lot of, of individuals, but it doesn't prevent them from, uh, from adapting. We've seen that much because the sentients that are still here are able to adapt to our weapons. It doesn't prevent them from being active. It just stops them from reproducing. So, you know, there's a limited number now, fine, but that's still a lot. And so there, there, something seems to have gone wrong with this. They seem to have adapted to an extent that this weakness, this flaw, doesn't affect them as much as it used to. And potentially whatever we find outside the origin system might explain what that was that they interacted with to allow them to do this. Um... But yeah, at which point then we find out that, that Ballas was the executor of Mars. And now we've seen a lot of stuff on Mars, including the whole Inneros quest thing where you have this very... Um, this this tribal civilization. You've got all of the old structures built into the, the rock there and all that kind of thing. But we don't see an awful lot of kind of Orokin structures like the big golden white ones that just sat around the place in the maps that we can play so far. So whether they've all been destroyed, whether they all got picked up or whatever else, um, you know, it's it's hard to say. But apparently Mars was, at least at one point, a cosy place for for an executor to be. So Ballas was was um, there and, and the others maybe seemed to have a little bit of a resentment to him. But if that's the case, it also just suggests that maybe on the various different worlds in the origin system we have seven executors and we've got like what more than 10 planets now because of the ones that have been terraformed so we've we've got a lot of potential places that could have been seats of orican power for the executors whilst the um the emperors were happily sat on the moon so it's it's interesting but then it seems like Ballas was playing them all along because Ballas realised they say the man, not the projection. <coughs> so there's part of me that wonders if at this point the executors weren't 
quite as different. You know, he's got golden irises, he's beautiful, fine. But he's also seemingly, at least in the face, symmetrical, which he may he is still at the moment. But then it refers to him more as the man, not the projection. And we know that this is a fair while in the past. Like, potentially a very long time in the past. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that Ballas was playing a very, very strong political game with a bit of a reverse psychology in there anyway um but again there are lots of people who are like oh well he had a part to play with the the creation of the sentience it's like yeah but here they're talking about a plan to reach other systems that are that are well outside of the range of their normal ships so that they can expand into new space lots of people have been like oh well ballas is daddy to the sentience well ballas allowed them to be made Ballas got other people on side to allow for their creation to potentially see how it went. But once they launched these proto-sentients, that seemingly at the point that they left the, the edge of the origin system, that's where we find the sentinels all floating around and, and being happy and looking to make friends with us. Um, so it's it's... Like they started adapting seemingly even before they left the origin system and those sentinels were just left behind whilst they, they were still friendly, they were still fine, they still just had a very simple purpose. And so it's whatever they found as they went outside of the origin system that um, caused them to, to shift, to grow, to change, to rebel. And I don't think Ballas could have at all seen that coming. Just because of the span of time involved between a, a possibly very, very high speed, but not FTL craft. Because the FTL in, in this game is the, or in this universe, is travel through the void. So it's kind of a, a case of it would have taken so long for them to get out there and so long for them to come back. And as much as the executors of the Orokin at the higher end are timeless and deathless and all that shit. They're still human. They still have to live in the moment. They don't have the capacity to stretch out and live out beyond that. But as said, there's also some stuff in here that's related to the Unum, but I'll get into that when I start looking at the planes of idol on the Unum and so on and so forth. But anyway, we've got a short one here, but this one's got a piece of art, which is cool. <coughs> And this is found on a, a runner infested. And this comes from Jordus, ship Cephalon of a third class frigate. And we, we now fight Jordus as the Jordus Golem. Um, but first my crew were torn down and consumed. Then my segments were ripped out and crushed. Now I lay blind but feel its growth through each failed system. And with nothing but time remaining, Jordus is forced to wonder... Will its complete infiltration bring some vicious mercy or a new nightmare? And then we've got this image of seemingly the inside of Jordus, the third class frigate, being consumed by infestation. And uh, like this, this is part of the hive mission. This seems to be the frigate on the outside with its, its stuff trailing. But yeah, so I mean, we know that the, the infestation is technocyte virus. And that it can go and infect. It's a nanite, more nanite based virus seemingly. And it can go and consume both living tissue and technological tissue. But there was something in the more recent strain that couldn't consume tech tissue. Or not technological tissue, but technological systems. Um, until Alad V gave it a kick to rework it. So this suggests maybe the, the, the tech side of things, this, this virus that Jordus ran into, this strain of it, was from earlier. So Jordus has encountered something from much, much earlier on, and as a result, it's, it was able to not just consume the crew, but also consume the ship. Because otherwise, you know, we, we, if, if it was if that easy for this to happen then we'd probably see many more active ships floating around that would have been consumed because we've got all the derelicts and things. So it, it would have been interesting. But 
Anyway. Now we've got a kind of follow-up to... I think it was the Lancer one, wasn't it? With Bilsa? No. Yeah, the Arid Eviscerator, sorry. So we've got Secutor Bilsa and their escape from the infested or aboard a, a ship or aboard a tower. Um, and so now we've got the follow-up of this from the Guardsman imprint. And so, I had been... Uh, I had been struck, uh, stuck on this ship for so long I had almost forgotten what an orokin of his station sounded like. I cherished each word he spoke. Bilsa, Alarez's uh, voice pulsed out of my console. Um, We're here to help, but I need to get this straight. You're being held hostage by... By a Grenier, I whispered. A Grenier, his skepticism was palpable. Yes, named Vatok. He has a name? Won't let me call him by anything else. I needed him to believe me, but I could tell he was struggling. The other Grenier are different. The, they're s still slow, but they listen to him and do exactly what he says. It must be a mutation. Impossible. I could tell he didn't believe me. Something like that would have been caught during production and destroyed. Only the military Grenier are given... Should have been caught, but wasn't, I interrupted. Look, the only reason I'm still alive is the genetic lockouts. I'm Sectaris class. This ship Cephalon listens to me exclusively. The Grenier need me. Stars, you have no idea what it's like living with these... Did you say Sectaris class? Now he was interested. Everything is filthy, I was rambling. They manufacture filth. My robes have gone yellow, uh, from yellow to black. I'm so tired, I don't even feel Orokin anymore. Did you say you're Sectaris class? His voice betrayed his impatience. Of course, aren't you? We're going to initiate docking, he said. I looked out the view screen. The massive exe executorial frigate um, begin began to pivot towards the tiny runner. Our tiny runner. Its marble-esque exterior was aglow in the light of the sun. How I missed those white hallways with their perfect gold trim. All busy with Orokin of High Station discussing the business of Empire. I belonged on that ship. It was my birthright. Stop, I exclaimed in a half shout, half whisper. You don't understand. He's dangerous. We've been raiding other ships, gathering Grenier. Stars, I've done things. I could feel the emotion and fear in my voice. I, I've helped him mass an army of sorts. Right, a Grenier army. He paused for a moment, then took an audible breath. Bilsa, listen, whatever you've done, you had no choice. You know what's happening in the system. There's honour to be found in surviving, he, uh, he asked. He said, what, <coughs> what do you mean? What's happen happening in the system, I asked. The executors, the council, they're all dead or missing. Even most of the Sectaris is gone. You might be the last. His voice was cracked. Do you understand? The system's falling apart, but we can rebuild it. There was a thud outside the hull. They had docked. What about the Tenno? The betrayers? He asked. Hopefully gone. Wait. Are you saying your execu executorial frigate has no Sectaris class or executor? How are you piloting? He ignored my question. We've docked. Hurry now. Open the airlock doors so we can help you. <laughs> it's too dangerous, I said. They're waiting for you. You'll be slaughtered. Bilsa, you have no idea what's going on out here. Everything is in chaos. You're lucky we found you. Nobody can be trusted, but I can help. Open the airlock doors. I can't. If I open those doors, they'll kill you all. Just talk to me for a while. It's been so long. Bilsa, his voice was getting louder. The Orokin are gone. The infrastructure, the rails, none of it works. It's all locked out. He was actually ber was he actually berating me? The infestation is everywhere. Riots, but they'll kill you. Alarez cut me off. The moon is gone. You're not making sense, Alarez, I said. Nothing makes sense anymore, he shouted. Open those doors, Alarez. I'm sorry. It's just that we don't have much time. He began to calm. Where is this Vatok now? asked Alarez. All the Grenier are in the docking bay. It's impassable. I paused and thought for a second. Wait, there's a different way. The emergency hatch. You could extend a maintenance tunnel, come in through the top of the ship, and avoid the Grenier entirely. Now you're thinking like a Sectaris. Are you... <coughs> are you alone right now? Asked Alarez. Yes, since they saw your ship, it's... 
like I don't even exist. When you get here, I'll try to seal them in the airlock remotely. That should hold them for a while. Hurry. I took one last look at the now grimy bridge that had become my home. I stepped onto the compact elevator that connected the runner's decks. At the top level was a systems room used to access the ship's many segments. I looked up at the hatch on the ceiling when I heard the couplers whiz into place. Cephalon, execute now, I called out. Understood, Sectaris Bilsa, replied the ship's Cephalon. Moments later, the hatch slid open. Dark eyes stared, at, stared down at me from behind Dax's helmet mask. He said nothing. I addressed him. Well met, Dax. Silently, the Dax scanned the room with his rifle before jumping down and taking position in front of me. In quick succession, three more guards fell in behind him. The guards were bloodied and battle-scarred, their equipment mismatched and worn. Alarez followed. His symmetry was off and his eyes were dull. Was he an en enginous class? Thank the stars you're here. I reached out to greet him, but the Dax grabbed me. Hold her down, said Alarez. He pulled out a device which I recognised instantly as a genetic descrambler. De Where did he get that from? My apologies, Bill, sir. You seem sweet, but I can't miss this chance. He threw a switch on the scrambler. A sample of my genetic code is all uh, of your genetic code is all I need for full access to the exator ex executorial. He pointed the descrambler at me. This won't hurt. My skin got instantly hot and then cooled again as waves of radiation passed through me. Look at you all, I said. You're just as tarnished as I. It's really over, isn't it? The Empire? I'm afraid so. He lowered the scrambler. There. Will you kill me then? I asked, my eyes fixed on the floor. Can't have you outrank me, he sighed. But first you'll command your Cephalon to cut off life support to the Grenier and the runner's airlock. I looked up at him. I can't do that. Of course you can. I wish I could, but... I already told you the Cephalon uh, told the Cephalon to open the airlock. They're on your ship. Confu confusion washed over Alaraz's face, just as uh, a drip of blood fell from the hatch above and splashed on the Dax's helmet. His eyes darted up just in time to see Vatok's massive frame fall upon him, driving a machete deep into the Dax's chest. With that, the doors opened behind me as more Grenier flooded the tiny room. The guardsmen stood no chance. Alarez, the only one left alive, stood frozen. Bilsa, what's going on? I warned you not to come. I told you they would kill you all. He, he was beside himself. You're working with the Grenier? Alarez, you're right. The system is a mess and I can't trust anyone. But these Grenier and I, we've come to an understanding. I smiled as I got to my feet. But please, will you talk to me for just a while longer? These Grenier are so dull. Where are you from? I don't recognise your... Fatok grabbed Alarez and tore his throat open, his red splattering my robe. I told you I wanted him alive, I shouted. No trust, he said. His words sounded clearer every day. We have the frigate and the lab. Don't need him. Do you always have to kill them before I can visit? I said. Fatok grunted. You are Grenier now. Don't need visits. <coughs> okay. So again, here we're seeing some fallout just after the um the the betrayal of the orokin by either us or the warframes definitely lotus um however which way that went we've got some interesting stuff going on so first off you've got kind of you you've got alaris with um, a different group of people but the other thing that the stands out is that there there's this void between you know this this emptiness between the different classes the different groups so you've you've got the um apparently the the more grunt work you are kind of informed on or, or trained to do the less kind of pretty you have to be so bilsa was an executor uh, no, sorry. Uh, what was their name? Avantus, sorry, was an executor. Bilsa was part of their corpus, but a, an, an, a sectarist class, or I, I guess a kind of secretary, second in command, whatever. Um, but then we've got this Alarez person who's possibly an Enginus class, which I would guess would be the next one down below 
an Archimedean, where you've got the Archimedeans who are the scientists and the historians and the, the academics, and then you've got the the ingenious class, which are maybe engineers, I guess, like actual physical builders and, and stuff, who probably oversee groups of Grenier workers to, to build things and, and such like. But there's a lot of, of, you know, they can't believe that the Grenier have taken names. Um, and they can't, be, uh, you know, they, they're having difficulty with um, understanding everything that's going on. You know, where, where everything from the, the executors and the council have disappeared and everything else. But the thing that I... Because we've heard tell of, emperors bef of the emperors before. We've heard it mentioned. We've heard it talked about in one way or another. But here, they're not too worried about the emperors because the emperors don't seem to rule directly. They're worried about the executors, the council. You know, they've all, they're all dead or missing. You know, dead, Avantus is gone, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Missing, Ballas obviously went missing for the longest time, but it's still fine. Um, you know, the, they're hoping that the Tenno are gone, but where would they go? That's the, the interesting question. Um, <coughs> but then it's a case of going, hold on, so the, there's no Sectaris and no Executor. How are you even making your ship fly? Probably because he's an engineer, so he's pulled out some systems and kind of done a little bit of jerry-rigging there. But then as as we're we're getting to it, it's just like the moon's gone. And now we know that Lotus shifted the, the moon into the void. But and that seems to have caused huge structural damage as it as it happened anyway, which is why it's when we visit the moon, when we visit Lua, it's got these huge cracks and voids and things that are all just crumbling and breaking away. Oh, Bridges that seem to be under. completely flat and straight seem to have been torn apart. So, you know, it's it's all kind of panning out. But potentially, this is something that uh, the the Bilsa didn't know about. Like, they knew about certain things, and yes, everything was going to crap, and yes, they're working with the Grenier and all that kind of thing, but it still comes down to the, the moon's gone. Why is that significant? Well, possibly because the moon was where the, the emperors were, and so him talking up here about the executors and the council are dead or missing, even most of the sectaris are gone, you know, and the infestation is everywhere. It's, it's this big problem for us, uh, because that's our infrastructure, that's our management, that's the people who are in charge. And yet then he's going, look, to, to just try and get you to understand the moon, the people who inform everything, you know, the, the actual Orokin, the people at the top of the chain, the, the emperors, they're gone too, like the whole moon is just gone. And that seems kind of harder to understand, and, you know, he's trying to warn... Uh, Bilsa is trying to warn... Um, Alarez and his his Dax away, but at the same time, it's it's you know not great um, because they're going to come across anyway. It's all kind of part of the plan. But then the the next thing that stands out to me is when they've got this um, this genetic code sampler, this this D scrambler, and you know feeling instantly hot. And then cool again as waves of radiation pass through me. Again, we see when we're capturing a target that kind of that that heat. They seem to be burning up, being vaporized by it. Um, so potentially that's that's a kind of like the one of the theories behind teleportation, uh, where you would you would have to delete entirely destroy and copy you at one end and then move you to another and it would be your consciousness would be more of a closest temporal continua rather than the the actual you being moved from point a to point b uh that seems to be at least in part some of the the tech that the aura can use and including our capture devices that we have in our warframes that allow us to capture things for lotus um <coughs> But then, you know, we've we've got these Dax, they're beaten up, so so's Alarez, they're kinda of getting there. And then, you know, you've you've got Alarez pretty much knowing that he's going to die. But you've got Bilsa seems you know, they 
Bilsa seems to want to still cling to the the Orokin and the Empire, and they take comfort in it. And something that springs out from me is when we saw, um, when we saw stuff going on with uh, Teshin in the uh, the War Within. You know, he was devoted to those that carry the Kuva. He's devoted to the higher higher echelons of um, of Orokin, and I feel like you know that's we're seeing part of that here, where whilst Bilset isn't kind of super kind of in love with lower classes at all, there's comfort in them. There's that that kind of reinforced, inbuilt love of the Empire, love of the things that came with it. And it take you know even though Alarez is is has actively betrayed her to well, to one extent or betrayed Bilsa to one extent. You know Bilsa still wants to just keep Alarez around just to draw comfort from it and and so on. You know at which point Vatok having none of it you know just just wipes them out. But the thing that stands out to me is again we've got the the Grenier queens. We've got the various other people like Vehek, like um, like Commander Vor, and and some of these others that that we've got as characters, and <coughs> some of them very inca very intelligent, very capable, but you've got Vatok here, and I don't know. There's part of me that just wonders what the rest of his story is, because he seems to be this big Grenier that's been able to gather forces gather an army it could very well be that he then spans on to be a great Grenier general for a while um, and whatever else it says that they've captured the frigate and the lab the lab probably to start cloning again I would imagine um, to develop out the Grenier army but the other thing that, that stands out to me is so okay we've got Bilsa who is a uh, an Orokin who's working with the Grenier but so far the only ones that we are aware of are the twins the the twin queens and they're an interesting situation as well because as was stated in the uh, the corrupted ancient thing where you know twins were an oddity why because everyone was cloned everyone was created in gene molds uh, in the Orokin Empire, and so as a result, having a twin in a gene mold is a really strange anomaly. You know, you've got this this one thing that has been designed and developed and should be constrained to creating one body, you know, and yet it creates two. And I'm sure that causes complications, it causes strangeness, it causes weird things going on. And so then they have to extract and work around it. But then part of me is like, so... Do the Grenier Queens both have a version of Bilsa inside them? Or was Bilsa completely separate? Now I know that there are the the uh, the Curia, the little cat the, the kind of um Orokin kitty little figurines everywhere. I've got some of them, I don't have all of them. Uh, when I get to doing a video on those, because I believe it's basically a long poem about the Grenier Queens. Um so we'll take a look at that in the future but otherwise guys probably the next video i'm going to do is probably going to be on the unum and the stuff around the plains of eidolon and stuff like that or it'll be about the prime the the entries on the various prime warframes i'll, I'll see which one is probably going to take uh, the most time and maybe put that out as two secondly and then do the other one first but Either way, guys, you know, I'm, I'm hoping you're finding these analyses uh, and this look through kind of interesting and useful because, again, like I've been, I, I, I was a, a, a grandmaster founder from when this game first became available for people to get behind. Um, and so as a result, I've been sat on the design council. I've been looking at all these other bits and pieces that have been going on. And so I've, and I've enjoyed Dark Sector to an extent before it. So... I've been kind of following this idea and the, the story and the, the progression of it for a while. And it's all very interesting to me. And it's all stuff that I want to look into. But at the moment, 
even with the new cinematic or new uh, c cinematic quests and the stuff that they're expanding on and showing off there's still an awful lot of kind of mystery box stuff around Warframe where there's a lot of stuff that isn't apparent or there's a lot of stuff that you need to go and dig through to find stuff like at some point I will go through all of the codex entries and all of the stuff about Orden Garrus and all that stuff as well but you know we've got this uh, interesting set of things that we can look through and we can dig through and we can find out and again I'm analysis picking people's words apart kind of what I do for a living as a coach so you know it, it when I'm sat here seeing all this stuff and I'm coming up with these ideas and I'm seeing the way that it pans out and here's the evidence for what I'm thinking um, <coughs> excuse me then you know I I want to jump into it i want to explain it i want to share it with you guys because again there are there are people who are still coming into the game new the last figures i saw in it were like they've gone up 10 million uh players 10 million registered accounts since um the whole 27 million registered losers thing um and so you know that's that's a big jump in in numbers again but again, there are a lot of people that are maybe coming in, playing for a little while, getting stuck on the grind, not seeing much of the story, getting stuck behind things, and so kind of burning out pretty quick. Um, but as a result, you know, I want to... It's a game that I've always come back to. Even if I leave it for a while, it's something I come back to again and again. And there are reasons for that, because it's a good game, it's fun, It's it's got a whole lot of interesting stuff in it it's just sometimes you need to scratch away at stuff beforehand so if i can put these videos out talking about the stuff that i find most interesting about the game then hopefully it'll help some people but otherwise guys i hope you found this interesting as said we've got a couple of different things that we can go into in the next couple of videos you know, the unum the prime warframe uh, law stuff in the codex uh and, and stuff like that so uh, you know drop drop me a comment down below what you'd like to see me go into next maybe um, but otherwise, guys, as said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.